Hi, I'm Brandon. Today I'm going to set up this Craftsman 12 inch bandsaw to do some resaw. Hello, everybody, welcome back. This is a Craftsman 12 inch bandsaw. There are many like it, but this one is mine. We start this tune up out by loosening up the tension adjustment at the top and then removing the wing nut and bolt on the front of the table there. And then we can remove the blade. I'm going to be replacing this small blade with a half inch, three tooth per inch larger resaw blade. That's why I can do some resawing on this bandsaw. These older Craftsman bandsaws really aren't known for doing resawing well, but we'll see if we can make it work. But first, I need to put away the old bandsaw blade. I do this by putting the arch of my sexy off-brand shop crocs on the bottom of the blade and putting the top of the blade in my upturned palm. Give it two twists and voila! And then next I went over to the bandsaw tires and tried to give them a good clean. Now I should have just replaced these because as we'll see here in a second, uh, they were bad. So I needed to actually replace them. Getting these tires on was a bit of a struggle. I used two clamps to clamp both sides of the tires and then use the tire tool directly across from the part of the tire that's already on the wheel to stretch the tire on the top of the wheel and then worked in quarters to stretch the next quarter on and then the final quarter on. Then I installed the blade with the teeth facing downward and you might notice on this that there are black tires on here. This is because I didn't realize that I needed new tires and then ended up needing new tires. I decided to take the table off the bandsaw for this video. This is not absolutely necessary, but it is helpful and allows you guys to see what's going on. There are four bolts holding this table on. The fourth can only be accessed after the table is lifted. Once removed, I scrubbed everything clean with the wire brush and vacuumed the slide. This would be a great time to spray some dry lube on the trunnion, but I could not find my dry lube. ADHD for the win! After the table was removed, I loosened all the set screws so I could back the bearings out and the guide blocks. The knob that controls the position of the guide blocks has been lost to time, so I'm using these knob turning pliers. Okay, maybe they're just regular pliers, but they really do great for turning knobs. There are a lot of things to back out in this bandsaw. I wanted to make sure that I backed everything out as far as possible, removed the guide blocks. These guide blocks on a lot of bandsaws are bearings, and really the bearings are kind of a better design, but the guide blocks seem to work okay, and I have purchased some graphite impregnated guide blocks that seem to help quite a bit. These pictures that keep popping up on the screen are directly from the manual. They show how where the guide blocks are and how to set up the bandsaw. And once once I get everything backed out all the way, I will explain a little bit further how we go about setting this back up. But it's important to start from zero in order to make sure that the bandsaw blade rides on the wheels where it wants to, and then we will go back in and set up the thrust bearings and the graphite impregnated guide blocks. But for now, I better stop talking about impregnating and thrusting before YouTube shuts this channel down. Sorry YouTube, I'll try to be a little more appropriate from here on out. Once I had everything removed, I could get on to centering the bandsaw blade. You want the bandsaw blade to sit in the center of the tire and to do this, you kind of give it a couple spins to the wheels. And if it's not sitting in the center of the tire, you can adjust it on this upper wheel here. You turn the screw in and it will go one way, turn it out, it'll go the other way. Once you get it all nice and centered, you can go ahead and tension the blade up. You want the gullet of the blade to ride just past the center of the wheel. That way the teeth on the bandsaw blade aren't being deformed, but the tension is directly behind the teeth. Once that's finished, you can push the thrust bearings forward until they just graze the back of the blade. You want a sliver of space between the thrust bearings and the back of the blade. You want the same amount of space on these guide blocks as you do the bearings. Just a sliver of space on the guide blocks. Once you get them set, you go ahead and tighten them down. 
making sure that they stay in the same position that you put them in because tightening the screws seems to like to move them. Once the guide blocks are tightened down, I like to move the blocks forward until they are about 1 seconds of an inch behind the gullet of the bandsaw blade. And the gullet is the largest recess part behind the teeth. You can kind of see the U shape there and it would be the deepest part of the U. Moving on to the upper bandsaw blade guide, we can get a clearer picture of how this all works together. The blade is essentially sandwiched in between these two guide blocks. The guide blocks keep the blade from twisting while the wood is moving through the bandsaw. And you can see me moving the thrust bearing forward until it just touches the bandsaw blade. We don't want it touching the entire time that the blade is moving around. If it touches every once in a blue moon, that means you have it probably almost perfect. And after that, everything is set up and it's time to put the table back on and start putting the bandsaw back together. Put the four bolts back in, put the cover back on, and then get out my handy dandy angle finder. This is a magnetic angle finder that I attach to the blade, zeroed it out, and then put it on the table. And since it was a little bit out of 90 degrees, I reached behind, loosened the table up, and moved it until it was exactly at 90 degrees. Now the only thing left to do is try it out. I cut this very thin piece of oak and as you can see on the calipers, I did a pretty good job. This really didn't wander very much and everything was within two hundredths of an inch, which in terms of woodworking is about the best we can hope for. I haven't tried to saw anything thinner than this tenth of an inch, but I might here in the next couple days and maybe see if I can do a video on some inlay banding. But for that, you'll need to like, comment, and subscribe. Catch you next time, YouTube. Thanks for watching. Have an honest brother's day.